Welcome everybody to Lunch Break Live. This is Lisa Carlin and I just got to Christy, Dr. Christy Funk's house. Oh, Lisa, what are you doing? Hi. Oh, you caught me training for my next Ironman. <laughs> I just went 100 miles. I'm hungry. <laughs> 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 Look Hi, at this. Everybody. Welcome to day 17 of the 21 day vegan kickstart. Congratulations if you've been faithful for 16 days straight. That's awesome. And if you haven't, this is the seventh. This is the seventeenth day. If day seventeen for some people is truly day twenty-five, we're so glad you're here. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh my God! Look at this view you've got here. Oh, right, spectacular. We got to take a look at the view. We yes. are. This is in Pacific Palisades. We got the sunset break there. With any surfing action? No, not at this moment. Look but at yeah, that. All the way down, you see Palace Bridge. All the way down, yeah, yeah, look at that. Look how beautiful this is. What a spe spectacular view you yeah. have. Yeah, the boys just cross on set, go surfing. And you guys, you guys surf. We surf, we can play baseball, we do lots of working out, swim, bike, You got run, music course. going on here. You got your bikes <laughs> front and center so you can use them. That is just fantastic. So we're having lunch today, right? You're going to do a little cooking we for us? We are. We've got some amazing things planned today. All right. So let's go. I'll follow you. Way. All right. I'll go around this way. All right. I'll meet you on the other side. Terrific. We've got a view over here as well. So Here we go. Dr. Christy Funk in the kitchen. In my house. And look at all this beautiful food. What's going to go on here? Just give us a quick overview. This is going to be an amazing chickpea uh, corn tortilla taco. Tacos. Oh. And I bet your kids love tacos. They love tacos. Okay. And they put, sometimes they just put this exact mixture over rice and make it like a rice bowl. Yes. And sometimes instead of corn tortillas, I just use a big lettuce wrap. All, so many options. So many options. So many options. This is going to be an amazing tomato corn salsa. And this is my daily favorite here. This is going to be a sweet potato avocado toast. A real twist wow. on the famous avo toast. Like this is just so much more amped up with lots more nutrients that nourish your body and your brain. We love it. So, so tell us, so what are you using? You're using the Kickstart app, huh? I'm using the 21 day Kickstart app. This is day 17, of course. But if you somehow are just stumbling into our existence on day 17, just go to your app store and it's totally free. 21 day vegan kickstart. It will change your life, change your mind and your body toward whole food plant-based eating. There are recipes for every single meal of the day, shopping lists, nutrition expert advice, and then super fun videos like this one. Yes, they're great videos. Dr. Neil Barnard and the staff at PCRM, their videos with uh, Susan Levin, who's our director of nutrition, uh, Jill Eckert, who's the also work, works in the um, with all the Food for Life instructors, and puts on the co amazing conference, the International Conference on Nutrition and Medicine, that happens in August uh, of uh, this year. So let's get started. All right. So we are going to. I'm just gonna, this is how this is how simple it is, peeps. You got your sweet potato toast. I'm going to start with that, and a summary. Elevate everyday toast with the addition of these amazing savory boosts, and then we've got our ingredients list. For one serving, we've got what we need, and then directions on how to make it. So number one, we'll head on over here to- Let's do that. Toast We're gonna bread. make some toast. Oh, you know what you need to do? Plug in the toaster. <laughs> okay, I am a surgeon. Okay, um, <laughs> we'll push that down. All right, what can we do in the meantime? All right, so now in a small bowl, we're going to mash. This is a Japanese sweet potato. If you haven't tasted this, it's got the kind of white yellow in the middle instead of the bright orange. <gasps> it's infused with just nature's natural sugar. It tastes like sugar bomb, it's totally natural. So we're gonna mash this in a small bowl and we're gonna add a little bit of lemon juice to taste as well, and the salt and the pepper. You know, if you're really hypertensive, salt's a bad idea, but other than that, a little salt here and there is necessary for life. So there we go. We'll do a little bit of lemon juice in here. This is just about a tablespoon. That's looking nicely mashed. And we'll get a little bit of the salt now. Let's just so you go like this. Again, it just twisks. Here we go. That's fine enough for me. And then we love the pepper. So get this one. The piperine and pepper. Literally in animal models, and granted we are animals, but actually animal models, um, literally slows down the spread of tumor of breast cancer cells, metastases slow down 
in and, the face of piperine. And you know a lot about this because you are a surgical oncologist. You're a breast cancer surgeon. I'm a breast cancer surgeon, a uh, board certified breast cancer surgeon, and it, besides loving family, killing cancer is what my life's all about. So I am also the author of the national bestseller, Breast the Owner's Manual, here in paperback. And how can people get this? Oh, anywhere books are sold. Amazon, PinkLotus.com, Element Store has it, um, Barnes & Noble, etc. So here's what I love about having written this book. I thought I was just going to do women a service by providing some really solid evidence about what they can do to reduce their risk of cancer, uh, how to optimize outcomes, really navigate people who are newly diagnosed with all of their options and choices because I feel like they're often shortchanged. They're not given options. They're given, this is what you're going to do, girl. And mm, there's some variability there and you are an individual. So it is not one size fits all when it comes to cancer. And that's why I wrote the book from my heart initially. <sighs> totally changed when I got into the writing of it. With that pause, just to have you on the edge of your seat wondering what happened, let's go on. Distribute the mashed sweet potato between slices of toast and top with either the cubed avocado. Oh, we gotta talk about avocado, ladies. And men, sorry. I need to <laughs> um, I'm just so used to talking to the ladies. Okay, so we've got, this is Ezekiel sprouted grain bread. And I wanna highlight a couple of things right now before we get back to the fascinating story of writing my book. Um, so what I love about Ezekiel bread and Dave's Killer bread and a few others that are commercially found everywhere is that we've got a ton of grains, right? Whole grains, 19 grams, no added sugar. And here is an expert tip. Whenever you go to look at bread, crackers, pasta, and you're just not sure if it's A-OK, -okay, there's two things you want to do. The first ingredient in the list, this is organic sprouted wheat. If you see Enriched wheat flour, eh, back on the shelf. Never, the first word enriched, it's a goner. If one of the first three ingredients is sugar, it's called dessert, put it back. All right, but here's my expert tip. Total carbohydrates, 15 grams. You take the carbs and whatever you're looking at and divide it by the dietary fiber. If that number is five or less, you've got a good grain on your hands. And this is exactly five. So go Ezekiel 49, okay. And what's the number on uh, Dave's bread? Dave's Killer Bread? It's also five. It's also five. Yeah. So they're both really good. So Very the, the fact that it's wheat, enriched wheat flour is not a healthy bread. They've pulled out all of the vitamins and nutrients and all the things that make it so fabuloso and then uh, tried to shove it back in, hence the word enriched. All right. I, uh, apparently I like really generous portions. So That's good. A potato in there. That's good. All Look right. at that. So you've got that guy there. That is great. And put a little... Depends if you're gonna make a sandwich out of it, you probably don't wanna do both halves, but we're just doing open face today. All right, so now we're gonna take the avocado. When I worked in the ER, <clears throat> there would be at least once a week, somebody who came in with what we called avocado hand. You can imagine what kind of thing. It was when the knife went straight through, they'd have a cut like this. We called it avocado hand. Don't do that. All right, so what you wanna do. The safe way to cut an avocado. Down here. Okay, so we're gonna turn this avocado in a circle. And look, that thing came right out. But I'm gonna teach you something in case, if it doesn't, if it's stuck in there like oftentimes it is, you do a cross. I used to make sandwiches when I was at Stanford, I worked in the deli. You go boom, like this. This is gonna squirt out if I do it because it's not stuck. And then you hatch it again and keep your other hand out of it. Boom, and it'll just lift right out. Wow. Yeah, so that's a um, nice way not to uh, lose a finger and to get the pit out. I usually just do it in little crosses like that and then scoop it so you can fan it all pretty on top. My kids are so obsessed with avocado toast and I have to confess, this is a first for me with the sweet potato. I can't wait for them to come home from school and try it. See, it fanned out Look so pretty. That. She fanned it out. I know, and now we'll do, I'm just gonna boop, boop, quickly wipe off the avocado from my fingers. Okay, let's get this tomato slicing. And we'll put that one Looks on. great, okay. So we have a Roma tomato. We do. Yeah, they tend to be a little meatier. Can we say that on a vegan show? <laughs> <laughs> you certainly can. They tend, they tend to have a little more body, I right. could say. Yeah. Okay, so we'll make that one all pretty like that. Look at how pretty that is. Oh my goodness, that could be a good design. That's great. You could. Okay. <laughs> I have enough jobs. Um, okay, so we're back in and we are looking at... Um, oh, so I wanted to tell you about avocado. Okay, yes. so... 
13.5 grams of avocado, uh, of fiber in a medium avocado. Amazing and an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acids, which are the alpha-linolenic acids. So important for brain health, right? The um, essential um, fatty acids are gonna come from these omega-3s and then they get chained together to be the longer ones. But this is such a great source of fiber. How many grams of fiber a day do you need to maximize health overall? But get, get this, 30 grams. 30 grams a day drops breast cancer incidence in half. 30 grams a day, I would like bloat and you know, toot my way home from work every day. It's not true. You build up to it. High fiber foods can cause gas, but just start with like a tablespoon a day and then work up to it. 13.5 grams of fiber, you're almost halfway there with this one medium sized avocado. What other great sources of fiber are there? You get 15 grams out of a cup of split peas, lentils, or black beans. You get eight grams out of a cup of raspberries. You get um, five grams out of some bran flakes. So really it's not that hard to reach 30 and there's so much health benefits from fiber. You just release a litany of antioxidants and anti-cancer phytonutrients into your bloodstream. So fiber it up. That's great. We have a post from Pink Lotus Power Up. It says, hey, Dr. Funk, the team at Pink Lotus Power Up is already getting hungry. Maybe stop by for a bite. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over, guys. I'm ready to serve you. You know where I live. All right. That's so great. I love it. Let's see. I love it. How much fiber do you, do, you, do you suggest people consume? Try attempt. Let's say once you've, once you've normalized your gut so you're not tooting all the time. Right, right. How right. much fiber do you think we need? We need 30 grams a day. And as I said, that will cut breast cancer incidence in half. Guess how many Americans reach the 30 grams of fiber a day requirement? Not very many. 3%. But you and I, long live us and yes. fiber. Yes. Uh, we'll be in the 3%. And what happens to constipation when you eat this much fiber? Exactly. You get such regular bowel movements and quite voluminous ones too, I must say. Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah. That's I it. love that. That's okay. it. Beats the, the avo toast is done. Yes. Uh, let's see. Oops. Betty Ann Corwell wants to know if the Japanese sweet potato is sweeter than a regular sweet potato. It is quite a bit sweeter and absolutely delicious. Um, although any sweet potato will do. And you can bake it. You know, this is, we made it look like mm, it just came that way. Of course, we baked it for about 45 minutes in the oven. I like pepper on everything, so I'm going to add a little more right there. And you know what you can do? You can bake, you can bake your sweet potatoes the night before. Have a bunch of them in your, in your refrigerator. I and then you can well. use them for a variety of things. You have triplets. This little woman <laughs> has, tri has triplet sons. They're 10 years old, and Justin just fell off the top of a triplet bunk bed uh, two days ago, broke his wrist. So it uh, comes uh, with a warning label if you're trying for triplets. Okay. Um, All right, that's great. Are, uh, you know what I want to say about the boys is okay, this is going to tie it all together. Let's move on to our next menu item, okay. and then I'm going to tie together the book story with the boy story. Um, okay, All right. so next on our list is going to be this scrumptious, colorful corn salsa. Let's see this. So this is going to be packed with fiber, lycopene, antioxidants. You can eat it, uh, you can put it on our next dish, which will be the um, chickpea tacos, but you can just have it with some uh, chips, baked chips, or some vegetable dip. So our how about some is, how about some raw red pepper and, and cucumbers? Oh, exactly. Some as veggies. A dip. Mm -hmm. You actually don't even yep. have to use the um, the, 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 the process, tortillas. not so yeah. good, salty stuff. Okay, yeah. um, so what we've got here as an ingredient, you can just see here in our gorgeous spread, we're going to make this salsa with, well, it's corn salsa, so I'm just going to go out on a limb and guess. Yes, we have corn. And this was this was organic frozen corn. I mean, we didn't even, yesterday we made, we you made a salsa, we made a, a, a salad with corn, and we actually cut it off the cob. You can do that, or you can cheat, and you can certainly get organic corn. And I hardly call this cheating. You know, when, when you get frozen fruits and vegetables, they mm -hmm. are picked at the height of ripeness and immediately frozen, and you actually are probably getting more of the amazing phytonutrients rather than waiting for it to be shipped from Peru or wherever it was to come to your market and then sit there for until someone buys it, two, three, eight days, right? Um, so of all the things, it's very interesting. Berries are actually more powerful inside your body if they come frozen and then into your food than fresh. You get more of the phytonutrient release because of the cell uh, walls. They've been lysed by the freezing and then poof, all those antioxidants get released much. The polyphenols are right into your bloodstream. Most corn, most soy in America, both those crops are GMO, but when it's organic, it's obviously a non-GMO 
product. Mm -hmm. Corn on the cob, I find it very hard to find organic in mm -hmm. most stores. It's, yeah, it is. It's very seasonal, and I hardly ever find it. So I love Trader Joe's because I can rely on them to have this organic this corn one. Yes. frozen. And you're not really, um, you're not cheating yourself yeah. out of any any nutrients. When you and and actually, the truth is, what I learned is that um, it, when thing when tomatoes and fruit, uh, especially stone fruit, is picked and frozen, it's picked at its peak ripeness. Mm -hmm. But when it's sold in the produce section, mm -hmm. then it has to be, they pick it before it's ripe. Yeah, and they, they have to use nitrogen, and ripen. they have to use nitrogen gas to um, cause it Easy. to ripen. Yeah, exactly. So this um, ingredients list is so delicious and, and simple. So we've got some corn, diced tomato, diced red onion, some lime juice, diced red pepper, you can throw in yellow, orange, green, other peppers. Apple cider vinegar, ladies out there, who doesn't want to lose a pound or two or five? Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar a day, two months later, against other uh, a, a fake acetic acid in this trial showed five pounds of weight loss. So that's I, right. Dr. Greger just reported on that on, in uh, uh, nutritionfacts.org. Yes. yes. Um, and Barnard. Love you. And guys. Barnard. Yes. Uh, and some fresh. Fresh basil. Basil. Oh, it's just the yeah. best. Okay. So let's. All right. Let's put that together. Up. All right, uh, you know what we didn't get ourselves was a bowl for this. Let's see. I'm going to put it in. Here we go. Let's see if this is big enough. All right. So this is the one that's going to come yeah. up after this. Is this going to work? Oh, look at these. Oh, I love your They're fiesta so wear. Right? Is, is this We've fiesta wear? It's fabulous. So I figured it was kind of a Mexican thing with tacos and salsa. All right, so here we go. I don't think we need too much direction here. This is such an obvious one, right? Yeah. Um, so directions, we're going to you get the corn ready. And, you know, and, and the thing is, you know, you're a busy surgeon. You're a mom. You're a wife. Yeah. You know, you exercise. You spend time outside. You write books. You give lectures. You run the the, the Pink Lotus Breast Center. I do. And you cook. This I can tell you. I'm here. She knows her way around the kitchen. This oh, is yeah, her kitchen. Yeah. She actually does the cooking. You should have seen her chop, boy. Oh yeah. She chopped faster than me. You and know, I, I chop. To, and I chop really fast. I went to Forks Over Knives and I did one of their lessons and I learned how to like keep your fingers out of the way so you don't get. Oh, you did the forks. So tell them yeah. about that. That's a good thing to tell I did about. do, I, well, no, I confessions I started and then never finished, but um, I got to do the chopping session, which was the first one. It's an online, it, so Forks Over Lives has an online, go do it, but, has um, an online cooking course. Yeah, it's fabulous, and you can do it live if you, uh, if you stick with it like I did not do, yeah. um, so that you can ask questions, and you've got instructors there who are answering your questions live, and you've got homework assignments, and or you can just do it on your own as I'm doing. So here we are, we're just pouring all of these ingredients together that we reviewed, that's the lime juice freshly squeezed and we've got that weight loss inducing apple cider vinegar. You know, I use this, oftentimes my entire salad dressing is simply apple cider vinegar and then I put some turmeric and some pepper. Again, back to piperine, the piperine and pepper makes turmeric up to 2000 times more bioavailable. So it's largely useless, the curcumin and turmeric, you're not gonna get it into your bloodstream and fighting against cancer cells unless you combine it with two things, fat and pepper. So maybe some healthy fats like avocados and fresh olives or, and um, the pepper. So you gotta always yeah. combine it. Right. Okay, and there's our basil. The basil. We're gonna do this, uh, that's all that was. We're gonna stir it up and let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. Let all those flavors marinate and then we'll be, it'll be perfectly timed to put on top of our, of our, Tacos that are coming up. Look at that, how great that is. So colorful and pretty. Oh, and if you could be in this kitchen, the onion and the basil together is just a delightful aroma. I'm so hungry. It smells wonderful. Okay, so that's the salsa. Loving it. Moving on to corn, tortilla, chicky tacos. Okay, let's get back to the app. All right, I have one of these. So basically, you're doing breakfast, lunch, and dinner in front of us in just a matter of minutes. Right? It, it can be so easy with, with some prep and you can shop, you know, for the whole week. Um, I'm a big fan of Instacart so that mm -hmm. I don't have to do as much shopping, but I also love shopping. I love going up and down the aisles. I find it therapeutic sometimes. And feeling. Like walking yeah. around you the You can feel it. You can see it. Yeah, you can really smell it. And sometimes I get delivered things that are already like, you have 10 minutes to eat it and it's a goner. So I'm, I like to do my own shopping when I can. Okay. So here we go. Here's our chickpea taco um, summary. This is a mildly spicy taco, and you can top it with other things in that shell that we don't have here, like um, jicama or cucumber, but we have some 
tomatoes and radish and zucchini today to put over this. You can also, as I mentioned at the top of the show, put it on rice and make it into a rice bowl. I love lettuce wraps, so we can do that sometimes uh, with this kind of a mixture. So we're gonna use some chickpeas, just a touch of water, a chopped onion. We've got zucchini. You could do bell pepper instead here, minced. And then the real magic here that is incredible is this potpourri of vibrant spices. So we've got paprika, oregano, allspice, chili powder, garlic powder, ground cumin, all of this mixed in here, a little bit of molasses. This is gonna be just such an amazing, delicious And we taco. have some lime over here too. Lime and juice. lime, fresh squeezed lime juice. Okay, so here we go to the directions. So how easy is this? Th these chickpeas came out of a, a can. They came out of a can and they're going into this bowl and we're gonna mash them. It doesn't have to be mashed into a total paste. You can leave some of them, you know, chunky, but you just want it to be a little bit mashed and ready for taco so consumption. Incredible. So here's the story. I was writing this book and I thought my, my main driving force was to provide some bright pearls, things I knew. I knew three cups of green tea a day cuts breast cancer in half. So I didn't even like green tea my whole, like in my 30s, but I knew this factoid, so I would just plug and chug every day at one o'clock. Mm, there's my three cups. If you squeeze lemon in it, the um, the addition of the citric acid from lemon will bump the EGCG, epigallocatechin gallate, um, antioxidant power of green tea up by fivefold. So every time you have green tea... That's 500%. It's... Yeah, it's... That would be 500%, right? Five times? 400%. 400%. Oh. Like if something is twice as, it's 100% more, right? Oh, so it's, okay, got you, it. You subtract got one it. Okay. Okay. So anyway, but it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a so lot. Much more. So yes. always do okay. the lemon when you do your green tea. But that's it. Like I had factoids like that. I had no idea when I dove into nutritional science, and I mean tens and tens of thousands of articles that I looked at, to write, get what I was going to write. But the way I ate was correct, and I'm a product of the 80s, okay? I was a teen, born in 69, so I was a teen in the 80s, and let me tell you, bread, pasta, rice, and potatoes, just look at it, stuff made you fat. Everything was Atkins, South Beach. It was the same thing. It's a different version today, of course, of paleo and um, um, keto, but it was the same thing, different flavor back then, and I bought it hook, line, and sinker. I was high protein and low carb and then I evolved into sort of Mediterranean diet style eating, and I went into the literature to prove that the way I ate was correct. And I was just blown away by the rock solid evidence that the cellular response to consuming animal protein and animal fat is everything that our major killers require and love. So I'm talking heart disease, stroke, diabetes, obesity, Alzheimer's, and cancer, breast cancer. Autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases, exactly. It goes on and on, I mean, just, uh, uh, arthritis and uh, you can have even things that are just inexplicable like chronic fatigue, right? It, you, you distill it down acne to the consumption of animal products. Why? Because the cellular response is one of skyrocketing estrogen levels, growth hormones, especially IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor. You get free radical formations, inflammation abounds, and oxidative stress, which is this battle inside your body. Too much stress is going to mutate cells and build up disease. And so you want that oxidant activity to be balanced by what? Antioxidants. And that's how you neutralize this battle inside your body well, where do antioxidants come from? They're not from IL-5. <laughs> They're from one and only one place. And Lisa is showing I'm us. I'm showing you colorful fruits, fruits and vegetables. vegetables. Legumes, lentils, beans, peas, nuts, and whole grains. This is the backbone of every single bite you must take. Because it not only is the detrimental effects of consuming animal protein, but it is the life-saving, life-giving functions of all of these plant-based chemicals that go coursing through your bloodstream once they're absorbed. And they literally seek out and destroy destructive, deranged, dead, damaged, dying cells. Things that you don't want in your body like plaque, like insulin resistance, like cancer cells. These processes that allow that to happen are literally halted, stunned, and potentially totally reversed by whole food plant-based eating. So once I realized this, my eyes were so wide open 
that I couldn't even handle it anymore. One day the boys, uh, back to the boys, came home from school and I ran downstairs. We were in a different place. Ran downstairs and um, said, boys, boys, come here, come here. And I had this big fridge and I opened it up with dramatic flair because I majored in drama. Boys, we're going vegan. And they're like, yeah, what is vegan? <laughs> so adorable, all in. That night, um, we watched uh, the, not Fork Server Nights. What, what, what the hell? What the hell? Because I wanted them to understand the principles behind which we were making this decision, that it had far-reaching effects. First and foremost, to be totally honest, we came to, to plant-based eating because of our concern over our health, but it rapidly evolved to a bigger understanding of how eating animals and conversely eating plants affects the environment and plant sustainability and not to mention animal cruelty and factory farming and climate change. All of the things that are the downstream benefits of eating whole food plant-based go way, way beyond your own arteries and heart. But for us, that, that is where it started. Being a doctor, I was persuaded by the evidence. So let's make... And did you learn any of this in your training? Let me think. No, none of it. <laughs> not a second. And, and do you have any thoughts about why not? Why not now that the, the documentaries are out, like Forks Over Knives and What the Health and Cowspiracy and so many other uh, great films that really talk about the evidence? Uh, like, like turning the Titanic around, it's kind of a multi-layered problem, but... The biggest barriers to just going all in are still confusion, despite the fact that those of us who are kind of in the thick of things have really done a deep dive into the science and understand it and know that until another randomized controlled trial or maybe 20 in a row comes along to prove that high fat, high protein, low carb consumption is the healthiest diet on planet earth, we're sold, like we get it. But that there's always the mixed messaging that's um, just as, as consumable to a physician as it can be for the lay person. Your physician is also extremely busy, has their own life, has their practice for which they're responsible. So turning around an idea that they've espoused for 10, 20, 30, maybe 40 years of their practice is not gonna be done in a day because it's the very foundation of, of medicine as we know it. So you're going to alter the foundation, everything they built up in their career and in their understanding on top of that is gonna come tumbling down and need to be rebuilt and restructured and rethought and wow, that's a lot of work. So that's where I think we have the problem with the existing physicians. In terms of medical schools and a new tide coming and changing the way we teach and think about how nutrition affects health, we're, you have to look at the money. You just follow the money trail. And there's just trillions of dollars in the animal agriculture industry and in processed foods, actually, because right, we're whole food plant-based. We're beyond vegan. Um, you know, vegan is beautiful, and that's what we are. But then there's like a, a different niche, right, where you're really limiting the salt, oil, and sugar. You're limiting the processed foods and the... Um, you know, all of it, the cookies, the bagels, that you can find, as everybody knows, right. vegan french fries and... And if you look at all the products we bought here, pretty much everything was bought in the produce section, with the exception of spices, but these are single spices, but almost everything came from the produce section. The vinegar didn't, the bread didn't, but most of the foundation of what this is is all whole food plant-based. All right, so now what we're gonna do. That was great, thank you so much. Oh. I think that's just an incredible clip. Thank you. It's gonna be an incredible clip, I'm gonna pull that out and so All people right. are going to have a chance to really understand where this is coming from. Exactly. Well, I'm just so excited that I can spend the rest of my life eating this way because my life is going to be much longer. So um, get ready. You're going to hear from me for a few extra decades. And we um, want to have you come back on Lunch Break Live a lot again and, and, and do another show. I so, would love to. And All people right, so. are loving it. The comments are great. Uh, Betty Ann Cornwell wanted to know, do you have to do, bo do both the pepper and the fat? And I think you said... Um, you do. You need a healthy source of fat to get the, you know why? Turmeric and the curcumin in turmeric is a fat soluble substance. So you need some fat. The, um, the healthiest source of fat on the planet, in my research opinion, is ground flax seeds. So I make a smoothie every day, found on page 69 in my book, um, that is oftentimes, and including today, was our breakfast. So the base of the smoothie is a cup and a half of soy milk. There's two cups of berries because they're beyond berries and broccoli and soy and flax, I think are daily must-dos. 
How um, much flax do you put in your smoothie? One per person? Per person, one tablespoon. Ground flax. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the vitamins will ground it up if you're using whole. But anyway, the flax is the most excellent source of fat. And then I put in the turmeric, and then I just do a few grinder grinds on the pepper mill, and there you go. That's in the smoothie. And you don't taste any of it. It gets so right. overpowered by the berry flavor. Right. And I do two fistfuls of greens in there. I have a couple secrets. I've got amla, which is the Indian gooseberry, very, very high yes. on the antioxidants, like 200 times the blueberry, which is amazing. And um, aloe vera gel, inner filet, very anti-inflammatory and excellent. We throw in a banana, a date. There's there's some secrets in there. Green tea. Uh, I already told you, I don't like can, the green can tea. Can you can you give us maybe you can write this out. We'll we'll put it posted in the comments. Love to. Because everyone's going to want to have, everyone's going to have that. And then you're going to do the next thing, but I know people are going to ask about soy. You're giving your kids soy. And Let's you are consuming soy. soy because I, I want it, I mean, I consume it, I know why, but I'd like to have you tell our audience. I'm going to tell you all about that in just a couple seconds because I don't want to mess this up. So what we're doing, again, we're oil free. What's the matter with oil? I'm going to tell you something. I didn't get it. When I was doing my book research and writing, I was, I was like, thought I'd done, haven't I done enough by just going completely plant-based vegan? I have to stop oil too, my sacred olive oil that I pour over my salads. Um, I just didn't understand what was so wrong with it, and now I do. So, it, it, believe it or not, it was kind of, it wasn't at the tip of the Google search, at least when I was writing the book, it wasn't, to, to understand what's so bad about oil. Um, it has to do with omega-6, 3, 9, it has to do with saturated fat. And it has to do with the tremendous imbalance that you're receiving. When you eat oil, let's, it's no longer that um, sacred oval olive in its oval office. Um, it is divorced from every nutrient that all of the fiber, the vitamins, the minerals are left behind in the pure saturated fat is what you're left with. And some unsaturated fat, of course, but you're left with just the fat. So every tablespoon, no matter how you slice and dice it, of oil, no matter what oil, is going to be just pure fat. And now you have to look at the composition of that fat. Is it omega-6, omega-3? Everything but omega-3 is very inflammatory and we're very out of balance with our six to three ratio. It used to be in way, way days of your one-to-one, -one, we're doing really well and you're in a good balance of more antioxidant and not inflammatory at four to one. Beyond that, scales tip and it's too inflammatory. And so the oils are just creating too much inflammation. And for anybody out there with high blood, high blood pressure or heart disease or predisposition to such, oil is going to affect arterial function. Its ability to dilate and constrict is going to be compromised by the inflammatory effects of oil. Okay, so this water is right. going. We're gonna add in all of our components now. We're gonna put in our onion, our zucchini, our spices. All those amazing spices that we went through. Okay, we're gonna get all this going. Look how beautiful Look at this that. is. Oh, oh, Ooh. that looks fantastic. I'm gonna come around. Please. Okay. We'll so we're gonna be over medium heat here. And we're gonna. This is actually gonna go on for six minutes. Lisa, a light so here. we have some time to. There is a light up there. Uh, so we have time to chit chat because this is a six minute dealio. If we're gonna actually show the whole taco um okay so we're he, he we heated the water and i that's where i went um on my tangent why water and not oil you know what you won't taste the difference oftentimes it took me six months i'm going to confess i was like forget it i'm still cooking with oil when we went vegan um but around the six month mark i was like all right for this recipe instead of oil i'm going to use organic vegetable broth mm -hmm. And I'll be darned, I couldn't tell the difference at all. Nobody said a word at the dinner table, like, hey, where's yeah. all the smacky oil goodness? Nobody knew. Yeah. You can, so, get your, you can get your onions to caramelize with water or broth. You can. You can. Yes, you really can. They will, they will mature. The sugars will mature, and, and um, they will caramelize, which is the indication that, they, that, that you've accomplished that. And now when I go out to restaurants and I have vegetables that are sautéed in oil, um, I probably should have special requested that they not do that, but mm -hmm. I, when I don't, uh, I taste it, and I, yeah. I, but it really just it tastes It tastes slimy. probably much more oily to you. So oily, and things taste so salty. You know, it's really uh, a different world when it comes to. Well, I think your salt receptors, your taste buds are down-regulated when you stop eating it. Oh, it only takes a week. And then you go back to eating what you used to eat, and you go, oh my God, so did somebody drop the salt shaker in here? If the mixture is drying out, which I'm gonna say it is, we're gonna add another splash of water. I happen to have her right here. Ooh. There we go. Okay. 
and that is great. And, uh, and, a, and a, so it says uh, that it says that we're going to cook, stirring occasionally, six to eight minutes until the onion has softened. You know, when it gets kind of. Okay, so we have a question: uh, Is there an advantage of soy over almond milk? Oh. Big time, yes. Okay. Big time, yes. You prefer, I'm imagining you pre prefer soy milk. Yes, so everything Let me go around over that here, you put in your mouth. Better. Thank you. Everything that you put in your mouth always uh, comes at the, it's always a choice, right? Because you could have put something else in your mouth. So I have nothing against almonds and almond milk. I ha Actually, I was out of milk the other day, but I had a ton of raw almonds that I'd already soaked. I always keep them handy in the freezer. So soaked raw cashews and soaked raw almonds in case of emergencies such as the other day. So I just put those almonds with some water into the Vitamix, blend it for all of two minutes and voila, almond milk. So it's not like I'm anti-almond milk is what I'm saying, but when you have a choice between almond and soy, oh, the anti-proliferative, anti-cancer benefits of soy are off the charts. And here you go, ready? Confessions from a breast cancer surgeon. For 19 years, I told militantly every single breast cancer patient with an estrogen driven breast cancer to spit that miso right out of your mouth. What do you think you're doing? There are phytoestrogens in soy. See, before I wrote my book, I was that smart. I knew how to say phytoestrogen, plant-based estrogen. And I was like, we don't know what those do in your body. Just, mm, how much do you love soy? Get rid of it. Sorry about that. Oops. Could not have been more embarrassingly wrong because when I dove into the science, get this, to prove with science in my book why I kept saying to avoid soy, oh man, my world was forever changed for the better because I realized that I was wrong. And soy has these properties, the phytoestrogens, let me get, we have time because of the saute business. Yeah. Let's break it down. You've got two receptors in your body for estrogen, alpha and beta. Alpha's on the cancer cell. When estrogen from any source inside your body, oh, I'm postmenopausal, ah, not so fast. So you've got two major sources of estrogen from yourself. One is from your ovary, it's doing estrogen all day long, peaks and valleys, giving you your menstrual cycles, oh, so fun. And after menopause, get this, everywhere you have a fat cell, you have an enzyme called aromatase. And aromatase is converting precursors to estrogen, mostly coming from your adrenal gland, testosterone, androstene, dione, et cetera, into estrogen. Not enough to stop a hot flash, not enough to make you fertile, but enough to fill that alpha receptor on the cancer. And when estrogen hits the alpha receptor for estrogen, it sends a signal to the cancer cell to multiply and divide. Okay, so now soy, phytoestrogen, get this with 1600% more affinity, the phytoestrogen binds to the beta receptors for estrogen in your body. And what does it do when it hits beta? Two incredible things shuts alpha down so your own estrogens can't get into the cancer proliferating receptor and it goes out into your fat cells and inactivates aromatase it acts like two of the major drugs that we give all breast cancer patients with estrogen driven cancers it behaves a bit like tamoxifen shutting alpha down and then actually when it does hit the alpha receptor because it can fit there with one tenth to, to one one hundredth of the signaling capacity, it tells the cancer cell to divide. So it's like a little whisper, a little whisper to divide. As opposed to estrogen, that's like divide, right? So it hits alpha, and then it just sits there like a car in a parking spot that you so wanted. And, uh, <laughs> and it and it, uh, it that's what tamoxifen does. That is the exact mechanism of tamoxifen. It's like a key fitting a lock, but then the lock doesn't open. And it goes out into that peripheral blood and to the fat cells and inactivates aromatase, which is that entire category of drugs called aromatase inhibitors. Um, you might know them as names like arimidex, aromacin, uh, Femara, letrozole. So these drugs have cancer reducing effects. Get this, the exact same percentages in human studies in breast cancer patients with estrogen driven breast cancers the same percent reduction, for example, as seen with tamoxifen, was seen with high versus low consumption of soy, namely 60% less recurrence of breast cancer, 29% less death from breast cancer in high versus low soy consumers. These are breast cancer patients. It is safe to consume soy and actually beneficial to do so. And shockingly, a 50% reduction in estrogen negative breast cancers. Okay, mm -hmm. so I know I'm getting technical, but now these are cancers who could care less about your estrogen. They're, they got their own brain, like they don't, 
we don't understand what is making those cancer cells tick. That's why we usually throw chemo at those cancers because we mm -hmm. don't get it. We don't have anything to target, so we're just going to bomb it all, including the cancer. And the uh, consumption of soy drops the incidence of recurrence for estrogen negative cancers by 50%. What does that tell you? It says that soy, in addition to having the whole phytoestrogen component, has some amazing anti-carcinogenic powers to stop and slow cell proliferation and actually potentially induce what we call apoptosis, which is a cell to kill itself, so programmed cell death. Soy is so healthful. Now, non-GMO only. 94% of the soy production in America is GMO. You're gonna get a lot of glyphosate. You're gonna get um, too much of that Monsanto stuff dumped on those crops, so you wanna do organic or non-GMO neither of which will have all the glyphosate, and uh, it's not that hard to find. The majority of soy that is GMO is actually fed to animals, so as long as you're not eating the animals, most of the soy, it's really easy to see that little green and white non-GMO And it's box. so interesting because people, especially men, will say, well, I don't want to eat soy, I'm afraid of gynecomastia or man boobs, and the reality is they're eating tons of meat. They probably are not just vegans eating tons of soy, but in a few studies, uh, they're case reports, they're not studies. And these case reports, oh, t take a look at what I'm saying. So I'm putting our smashed chickpeas, there's no nothing else in here, this is just smashed chickpeas, into our beautiful saute. Beautiful saute. Yeah, it's so aromatic. Okay, oh, so, so now I'm getting a question about, what's what about the safety of soy for men? Yes, okay, so it, there, it is ha has been uh, purported that high, that Soy consumption in men will lead to feminization, will lead to sterility, will lead to men boobs, or gynecomastia, as I would call that. Um, and you know what? You're right. It's true. And you know how much soy you have to have? Like a gallon of soy milk a day. The pe there are case reports, and you should look it up. You don't have to take my word for it. You cannot find someone who's having some tofu uh, tacos or something like that. Uh, even twice a day, and a cup of half a, and a half of soy milk a day, who has these untoward side effects? It has to be some uh, ridiculously high amount of soy that no person is generally consuming, unless they get some wild idea that they want to prove the point that enough soy can cause man boobs. Which so, a gallon a day is a lot. Right, right. No one's going to consume that. That doesn't quite make sense, but. Uh, tell us about, is there, I've got another question about a brand of soy. Is there some kind of parameter that you like besides non-GMO? Is, should it be organic? And, well, organic is non-GMO by definition, but there are some soy milk that will say in soy products that will not say organic, but then indicate that they are non-GMO. What do you think about that? So, look, whenever you can afford organic, go for it. It's definitely a higher quality food, no matter what you're talking about. But there is some wiggle room, and when it comes to soy, non-GMO, just don't have GMO. And if, if you can afford the organic, definitely go for it. But non-GMO, not organic, is totally fine and a preferable choice to, I don't know, a hamburger or a piece of uh, organic, skinless, boneless chicken breast. That is way worse for you than non-GMO, but non-organic, inorganic. So, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Uh, yes. Everything's a comparison. What are you What are you comparing to? For example, are you going to compare um, a blueberry to the amla, the Indian gooseberry that we were just talking mm -hmm. about? The Indian gooseberry has two hundred times the antioxidant power. Does that mean you should not have blueberries? Of course not. But right. so that's that's. The, you do the best you can, and you try to have some variation in your diet. Keep in mind that the pesticides in our in our foods largely um, aggregate in the skin. So when I buy fruit, fruits and vegetables, for example, I am not, of course, organic bananas are often cheaper than inorganic. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. They'll be like 19 cents each for organic and 21 for, anyway, it's funny. But anyway, this is something that I wouldn't like dicker over if the kids were like offered a banana by somebody. I wouldn't be like, wait, is it organic? Because they're gonna peel that skin mm -hmm. and not eat it. And that's where all the pesticides are collecting. Um, so you were talking about thick skins like mangoes and papaya. Mango, and papaya, avocado, not as organic. Pineapple. Well. This, this is organic. I buy it when I can. But pineapple, exactly. I'm not going to be too fastidious about, ooh, is it organic or not. Especially while my children are children. I'm trying really hard to only, I think the elderly and the infirm, for whatever reason, immunosuppressed, uh, people going through chemotherapy, and children are going to 
collect those pesticides and not excrete them as readily and it's good they're still they're doing they, they're in a phase of so much cell turnover as children mm -hmm. and so much cell turnover as someone going through chemotherapy that this can have an adverse health effect down mm -hmm. the road it's really hard to measure it's hard to quantify the parts per million of pesticide that actually get into your bloodstream after consuming non-organic food is very small but on a chronic consistent basis it's going to have some effect mm -hmm. it's hard to measure but i'll show you so i these are organic sweet potatoes because not your japanese ones that you brought today but um so the, these are organic the apples are organic because we're going to eat these skins the cantaloupe not so much i don't mind as much so something to keep in mind when yeah. you uh, when you have to pinch and pennies. that's pretty con that's pretty consistent with what the environmental working group says too when they come out with their their dirty dozen their dirty dozen it's, it's usually the dirty dozen are, are the 12 they come up with it every year the 12 fruits and vegetables that they recommend that you should buy in 20 uh, uh, organic and then they have the the clean 15 which are those that you can buy, buy. conventional and, and if you look at those lists by and large of the 15 pretty much most of them like 12 of them will have skin and that's yeah. proving my point like because you're not going to eat the skin and right. then no, like number one on the dirty list pretty much year after year strawberries yeah. strawberries strawberries it is okay let's all right that's our, great all right i'm going to come around here cooking all right so if you prefer add chopped jalapeno i don't think so people i mean you totally do it but i'm a spice wimp when it comes to super spicy the other day i took a serrano chili pepper i was making this amazing garam masala if you'd like there are leftovers in the fridge because no one will eat it except my <laughs> husband i put that serrano chili pepper in and the kids and i sat down and one bite we're all like water 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 my husband's just like what's wrong he's eating away but whoo i am a Pepper, uh, jalapeno wimp. Um, so I'm just saying all this because it says if you prefer add a jalapeno, I prefer not to. Yes. Um, and? And if you do add a jalapeno, you have to be careful of the seeds. The seeds are way hotter than the jalapeno well, gee, itself. Well, gee, why weren't you here two nights ago when I was putting that serrano <laughs> with the seeds into the ground? Oh, salad. the seeds are going to kill you. I, I kind of knew that because um, I happened to lick my finger. And I just well, it's a good that. thing you didn't touch your eye. Okay, so this doesn't gorgeous. that look delicious? It this does. is going to be the basis of the taco. Look at that! And it oh smells my fabulous. God. So that mixture of spices. I can smell it from here. It is. It's taco seasoning flavor. Like that's just what I'm smelling, and it's heavenly. And oh, I just love it. Okay, so moving on to um, you're gonna add. So we added the chickpeas. Look at me, we talked so much, I forgot about the lime juice and the molasses, so we'll do that now. Okay. A little lime, a little molasses. Well, that's gonna come out the speed of molasses. <laughs> uh, get a little help here. We'll saute this up for another 30 seconds so I did, can get it, the flavors mixed together. Um, I recommend just eyeballing molasses and putting it straight in because you're losing half okay, of so it. Okay, somebody, so Joanne Delmar wants to know, where do you get the amla? The Indian gooseberries. Amazon. Organic Amazon. omelet. It's super easy to find. And are they dried berries? Are they, is it powder? I keep it in the fridge and it looks like this. Organic omelet. And it's just this kind of beige-ish powder. Yep. Okay. And I, I actually went to the Indian market and I bought, oh, did I did, and I bought, uh, they, were dry, they were frozen. Oh, good to know. Yeah, oh, frozen. That. Yeah. Okay, we reduce the heat. I don't know the HDMI. Right. Taste, or if you'd like extra salt, I won't. Uh, even though it's dry and sticky, you can add some more water. Or you can throw in some... Okay, so we just have to heat up the tortillas. We have to do that, that one ingredient. So let me mix the uh, lime juice and molasses in here. Then we're going to heat up our corn tortillas. Fill it. You know what I do, because I'm an avocado aficionado. <laughs> I would put some fresh avocado well, in. Well, let's do that. I, have, I think I have another avocado. Oh, let's do it. And then we put our salt All in. All right, I'm going to walk over eating. here so I can grab another avocado. Let's see. I got it. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that for the wiggly camera. I... Mm, taste. Okay. Now, one of them is has been damaged a little bit, so so check them out. Make sure they're okay. checking the flavors here. It's good. You could use a little more salt. Okay. So while we're do while you're, while you're doing that, let me ask no. you about. I was I was cheap with salt the first time, so. About the kicking cancer summit. You've got a great event coming up in April, I think. Yes, April 24, 25. You can sign up at pinklotus.com forward slash summit and you can read all about it, but let me give you a little 411. This is going to be such 
a high energy, cancer kicking, life altering, two day retreat, really um, much more, it, it, certainly I'm gonna mention too, but this isn't like a vegan conference. It is a bigger deep dive into the soil of your life where we really root around in there and we find the dead, the damage, the dry roots, we kind of prune and weed and we wanna plant nine trees into the soil of your life, which when they grow and yield fruit is going to create the most bountiful, fruitful existence possible for you. So we're gonna dive into things like thinking and mindset, learning, growing, meditating, fasting. We will talk about eating because I love to eat and I love to talk about it. We're gonna talk about your social circumstances, love, sex, friendships, and religion and spirituality and um, what else are we gonna talk? Oh, of course, movement. I'm big on movement. And we're gonna talk about how mood is affected by the simplest things such as posture, right? Neurotransmitters, it affects your biochemistry and how your whole outlook in life can come from simply how you're standing, how you're breathing. So we have so many things to dive into and learn together about uh, in this really safe, beautiful, gorgeous Terranea Resort in Palos Verdes, oceanfront, just emancipating. You walk in that place, take one deep breath, and you're already halfway to nirvana. No, um, but really I'm excited to empower women with these very actionable start right now, take it home power kind of advices as they pertain to all aspects of leading a whole fulfilling life that achieves your potential. And there's no better time to start than now. And frankly, there's a really um, kind of poetic coolness about it being 2020. It is a brand new decade. So let's make this the best one yet. Join me there. We've got tons of uh, fun surprises in store. And it's so it's the 24th, 25th. You can come Friday. There's a VIP reception. And then there's just this awesome poolside gathering for everybody. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be different. And this is going to be your first one? This is our inaugural one. Yes, I have a feeling there'll be more. To, there'll be more to come. Absolutely. Now, I now that I haven't gotten the tags on this post yet, but the meme that we posted this morning about today's Facebook Live with Dr. Christy Funk has all the tags for this. It has the the hashtag for the. Uh, uh, it's called. K cancer, cancer kicking, kicking summit. summit. Yes. So it has the hashtag for that. It also has the tag to the name of the resort. How do you pronounce that? Terranea. Terranea Resort. Yeah. So. And it looks absolutely beautiful. Amazing, so. Yeah. And I'll I'll add those tags here when we're done. Perfect. Thank you. So we're about ready to do a taste test. We are. I'm just gonna heat up the tortilla. I like them a little warm. This is wonderful. So I want to ask you about being a mom to vegan boys. I mean, your entire your husband is vegan. You're all plant based, and we're all athletic. I mean, Sebastian, ten years old. That kid, I kid you not, can ride his bike without stopping one hundred miles. His his life goal is to currently is to um, ride the Tour de France by the time he's seventeen or eighteen, whatever age they let you ride it. And um, you know what? Why not? At, at nine, he was riding 100 miles in six and a half hours, which is an insane pace of like 60 miles an hour without stopping. So that's a vegan kid. The kid isn't weak. So <laughs> I want to. My husband's a, a world-ranked Ironman. Wow. Full Ironman. I just do abs. Yeah. So. And well, we have a lot. We have and we have a lot of Iron Men in this community. Dr. Heather Shankman is a cardiologist, a board-certified interventional cardiologist, and she's done two Iron Men. Ironman triathlons. Um, who else? Uh, Jim Loomis, who's right. the medical Jim, director Jim, of him. Physicians Committee, just commit just just did his uh, first Ironman, I think about six months ago, and that Amazing. was a huge that was a huge undertaking for him. So, and you are an Ironman. That is just amazing. I am. Iron you are oh half Iron a half Ironman. Half yes. Um, so, I love that. You know, the kids took to it very readily. Um, they don't find it difficult at all. I mean, maybe there's power in numbers because there are three of them going strong at school, but honestly, they come, they get it. They come home and yeah. they're like, Mom, every single day so-and-so has Lunchables for lunch. She's gonna get diabetes. <laughs> I'm like, you didn't tell her that, did you? Right, I don't want right. To do but that tell me, kid. what kind of pushback do you get from other parents? Nothing. 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 Um, they're interested. They want to understand more, and I really appreciate that. And I'm not pushy. I think small steps, like just because I'm all or none and in a day we went vegan, that's, that doesn't mean I have any judgment for people who just take small steps and maybe change 
breakfast to being whole food plant-based, get rid of the eggs, get rid of the cheese mm -hmm. sprinkled on whatever you're yeah. eating, and have a delicious smoothie or a, now that you know you can, a tofu scramble with some peppers and onions or um, uh, steel cut oats and berries, right? There's so many easy breakfast choices. So if you make one meal a day totally plant-based and before you talked to me, you were eating every meal with some sort of cheese, butter, milk, etc., then- and That's a third of the way. It's amazing, right? So, you know, at baseball, the kids are big into baseball, and where we play, the, the we alternate who brings, like, a meal. If it's a night game, you bring a meal for the parents to snack on and then, and then the kids, and the kids generally, right around game end time, Domino's is showing up or whatever pizza delivery guy with pizza. It's, like, the easiest thing for parents to do to feed the team. So, you know, they're really sweet. They always have a vegan pizza for my boys. So it's really nice, although it's you know highly processed and like a total treat day. But the point is, they, um, they they don't have a problem with it, and we're not very judgmental about it, and it just seamlessly works. And then I love when it's my turn because I get to introduce them to a vegan meal that's delicious. And I mean, truth be told, it's we all know as vegans that the taste bud profile is going to take a minute. So the kids, when I bring like a vegan pizza for the whole team, which I will do. Or I've made um, like a taco bar there. It's still hard to keep things warm, but it I worked. The, some of the kids are a little bit like, where's the real pizza? Or like, this tastes different. You know, because their taste buds are used to more of the processed foods and the high salts and sugars. But they, uh, you ask how they are receptive to it or do they feel judged? And, hmm, it works, it's great. Love that. Yeah. I love that. Okay, so we're ready for the tacos. All right, so we're gonna. Let's see how you're gonna do that. So you just taco. heated it up really quickly. I just heated it up a little bit, and then I'm gonna put our filling in here, and we're gonna garnish it with our. Delicious. I'm gonna come around and look at that again. Okay. So we can see. We're gonna garnish it with some homemade salsa. Oops. There we go. So we got that look at going that. on. It smells so good. It smells so good. And we're gonna grab a spoon. Look at that. And then we had had a few, you, if you didn't make the salsa, you could just do, we got some radishes and some fresh cilantro. Oh, cilantro is just the bomb, isn't it? That's Let's good, I might have two hands too. Thanks, I'll get these out. Good, and I love cilantro stems. I never get rid of those. My parents are in there, well, my dad's 90 now, and they grew up in the depression, so it was definitely waste not, want not, and right. We and broccoli things. stems. Yeah, exactly. I use all those. There we have it. All right, you want to take a sample, take a taste? Bon appetit. I will. Let's get, I'm going to get some of the chickpea in there on this side. Mmm, 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 mmm. She likes it. Mmm. You think the boys are going to like it? They're going to love it. They're going to love it. <laughs> so there we have That's it. That's wonderful. And then how about you have a taste I'm of. I'm going to have a taste of this guy. Have a taste of this one, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Our, remember, this was our Japanese sweet potato, sprouted bread, avocado, open faced toast, which makes it for an amazing breakfast. I'm going to get a little slice of tomato on there, too. Mmm. <laughs> That's fantastic. The, the sweet potato really deepens the flavors of the avocado and the tomato. Like, it's very flavorful. I love that. I've never done that. I, you know what I've done? It's not, it's not sweet potato, but hummus. I'll do a hummus spread. Yes. And the rest of what we had here, but I've never done sweet potatoes. So and we've had that. Thank you, we've had the, we, vegan kickstart. Yes, yes. Those are the dietitians, uh, the registered dietitians, and uh, the staff at Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. So uh, I, I, I also want to tell our audience that you were the face of uh, breast cancer awareness in the month of, I believe, October 2019. Let's beat breastcancer.org. So this was um, a joint venture between myself and. The Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And what we wanted to do was recruit as many people as possible to join the fund, and that is taking a pledge, a pledge to maximally reduce the odds of ever getting breast cancer, or if you're already a thriver, of ever having it come back again by embracing four simple but extremely powerful 
lifestyle alterations. So first and foremost, you want to consume a whole food plant-based diet. You want to exercise regularly. You want to maintain an ideal body weight and you want to limit or eliminate alcohol. So those were the four steps to taking the pledge. So we had people sign up and then each week they would get an email kind of espousing like the benefits of that particular thing, whether it was the maintain an ideal weight and then here are the reasons why, or exercise and here's the different types and what constitutes exercise and how much, and just to help you feel like you're, you have some guidance in the, taking these actionable steps, and then also you're part of this wider community. We had over 10,000 signups. Next year we're gonna go for even more than that. We had some phenomenal celebs join the fun. So you can still go straight to it, uh, letsbeatbreastcancer.org, and sign up now. Uh, it turns out, ready for it? You have breasts all year long, not just in October. So <laughs> you're welcome to amp up the breast health volume by signing up now. Why not? Who cares what month it is? And but, how about for people who are survivors? So for survivors, I'm really excited to offer the world our Pink Lotus Power Up platform. This is a community not only of thrivers and survivors, but also just of women who are deeply interested in maximizing health particularly breast health, that's always my angle, but it turns out if you're keeping your breasts healthy through healthy eating and uh, lifestyle behaviors, by default, all of your cells are getting healthier. So whatever I'm espousing you do to, to limit your chances of ever getting breast cancer or having it come back are gonna have amazing effects on staving off all the killers. So heart disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and obesity, and this Power Up platform does exactly that. It's a, it's, the, pretty much, the, I think it is the world's largest online community of breast cancer thrivers and people interested in breast health. And is this through a website or is this yes, through a... Yes, so pinklotus.com, if that's all you remember, you'll find it, but pinklotus.com forward slash power up. And it's 100% free. You can sign up and here are the kinds of things that you'll find there. You will find all the functionalities very familiar to you. Facebook, everything that Facebook does, this does. You sign up, you've got your back picture banner, you've got your banner, you can post things, you can post pictures, you can go into chat rooms, you can start threads, you can you know, just thumbs up people and like what they're doing, right? So there's a whole Facebook thing. There's also all the functionality of GoFundMe, but this is, um, uh, this is different in that it's just breast focused and so people might post that they need help with their reconstruction funding and then people can fund that and it's cheaper than any other source on the internet, including GoFundMe. Uh, that's called crowdsource and then we have something that's just like craigslist but it's called breastlist where people can buy sell trade or give away their gently used wigs bras hats scarves things that they used during their treatments but they you know, never want to see again but it's like some people pay like five grand for a wig right so you can put it on breastlist and it's you know like craigslist or not even wow. yeah and that is i'm just i'm amazed that yeah. is incredible Incredible. It is. Wow. Uh, my, favorite, I, my favorite thing, I have to get this because it's just so um, near and dear to my heart because it started off as something called Funk Buddies, but now it's called Breast Buddies and it's global, international, multilingual. Um, this is a place where you can go. This is like match.com. So let's say you're newly diagnosed with breast cancer and you would love to talk to someone who went through the journey. Well, let me tell you, sister, <laughs> there is a world of difference between stage zero and stage 3C. And those two people sh probably shouldn't communicate with advice that much because it's, it's just night and day. It's like sunshine and rainbows trying to talk to a snowstorm and neither is feeling like they're you know, getting the other person. So here you go, you log in, you can even do it kind of like a voyeur. You can be anonymous if you wanna just check it out. And you put in your age, your stage of cancer, maybe, and then treatments. So you could put in lumpectomy or mastectomy chemo maybe, or anti tamoxifen, right? Or uh, reconstruction options, you could put in children, right? So like match.com, plus or minus five years in age from you, same stage, you can look at all the people who have signed up because they've been there, done that, and they're there because they want to come alongside you, to hold your hand, to offer support and advice, or just be a sounding Oh board. my God. It is so beautiful because it's really, someone very much like you, and you can be like, oh, she has a four-year-old boy too, I want to talk to her. So Breast Buddies, this power of community is really um, a sacred sisterhood 
of, of survivors and thrivers, and I love it. But the power up community at large does not have to be a breast cancer patient. It can be just supportive caregivers or just women concerned with health because we have an entire section of blogs and videos. We've got my podcast where I interview others. And of course, we have things like the summit in there coming up. So check out Power Up. This is an incredible, incredible journey that you've been on and you've been able to really take you know, take your initial plans to be a general surgeon yeah. and have them kind of take a slightly different path. And I don't honestly know, but I know you used to pre- used to operate with my uncle, Dr. Mitchell Carlin. Yes, Carlin, yes. My mm-hmm. uncle, Dr. Mitchell, who passed away a few years, who passed away a few years ago, but he was a surgical oncologist, and he pioneered so many different methods of. Uh, addressing uh, breast cancer with minimally invasive methods. And I know that when you came to Cedars to do your fellowship, you had an opportunity to work with him a little bit. Yes, he was one of the first surgeons in the country to really focus on breast as a subspecialty and thyroid. So one day we were doing a thyroid um, thyroidectomy, removing a thyroid, and I was assisting him because I had just started my private practice and I was didn't have a lot to do, so I would assist him. And I, his hands started trembling and I was like, Mitch, are you okay? And I looked up and Anesthesia looked over and he had actually gone into AFib and he was he was okay but he needed to like back off and go lie down on the gurney that the patient had been brought in and start an IV and they're tending to him and this is so much Carlin's why I love this story he's completely awake he was fine and he, but he from the bed he's like Christy 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 make sure you take a picture of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. <laughs> He's like barking orders. And he always took a picture to prove that he didn't ding this important nerve when you're doing a thyroidectomy. Um, but I just loved that about him. That here he is in the throes of his own like medical mini crisis. And he's still concerned about like, am I doing the right thing for this patient? And make sure you get that photo. <laughs> we had a good laugh about that for years. So, and I've got family members that are at Cedars right now, a, a trauma surgeon who works at the breast cancer breast center now, Scott, Scott Carlin yeah. and Beth Carlin, who's a GYN oncologist. Yes, so, she's a mastermind. Yeah, mastermind. So anyway, thank you for, for giving us, sharing that story with us. It's, it's really phenomenal. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uncle. yeah, my Uncle Mitch. Yeah, I miss him a lot. Anyway, I want to thank you so much for joining us today, for giving us all of your time this afternoon on Friday afternoon. Oh, this was pleasure. wonderful, and you gave us such incredible information. Please, if you're listening, share the video. Put it on your page. Tell your friends to share it. This is life-saving information for women it is and when you look at the what's the rate of 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 breast cancer in women today and what's the death rate it's one in eight women will get breast cancer so it's 12.5 percent and the death rate is actually hard to get your finger on it because treatments are always improving and so survival rates are increasing but as a broad generalization um, if you are diagnosed with breast cancer the ultimate chances of dying from this disease are somewhere between 22 and 25 percent. That's a lot. It is a lot. And these are young women, these are single women, these are mothers, these are grandmothers. So this information is really life-saving. It needs to be shared. So I just implore you, please share this video, talk about this video. Come to the summit. Go to hashtag Cancer Kicking Summit, correct? Yeah, pinklotus.com forward slash summit. We'll take you to the information page and sign ups. That's wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Dr. Christy Funk, you practice at the Pink Lotus Center in Beverly Hills, California. I'm Lisa Carlin, reporting live for Jane Unchained and doing this series for Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. This is now day 17. Tomorrow, day 18, we have the fabulous radio, uh, national radio commentator, Mark Thompson, is going to be our guest chef. And he said to me, Lisa, I don't cook. I said, the recipes are designed for people who don't cook. Don't worry about it. So please join us tomorrow at 1230. Lisa Carlin signing off in uh, Pacific Palisades, California. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Bye. Bye.